Since 2010, Touchstone's Teen Pregnancy Prevention Program has addressed the growing need for awareness and education on teen pregnancy with a focus on improving adolescent health. Through that programming, Touchstone began forming a community-led coalition, understanding how important it is to give a voice to the community by working closely with them to determine where changes in program and services may have a long-lasting desired effect. The Community Alliance for Resources and Education Coalition also known as CARE, is a group of collaborating community members, youth, local agencies, schools, and other invested individuals. The coalition aims to improve the health and well-being of teens in the West Valley through collaborative planning and action. I joined Touchstone from day one is because I truly believe in their initiatives and their goals which is helping the youth. My heart is actually with the youth and I with my, through my work in different volunteer organizations I work with the youth in many ways. The reason that I love being a part of CARE is because a lot of times you go to networking events, um, meetings, everything else and Everyone is competing for everything, whereas CARE Coalition um, is really about coming together and providing all the resources. And even though some people may do similar jobs to you, um, there's always more that's needed. And so it's just nice to have that place that you can come and meet other resources and be able to work together rather than competing on things. It's impacted me, again, personally, because I've I come across a lot of youth that I can help with pat with flyers or with information and that way I feel like I've also tried to improve their life and their parents' life. We know a lot of youth struggle. We don't know where they're coming from or what's happened the day before or the morning. So that way we can usually be one of the trusted adults in their life. Um, so in the beginning it was just the networking meeting coming together seeing how we could benefit each other and now it's grown to a lot more people coming, um, a huge mailing list, having trainings offered um, and conferences that are offered um, and just getting more and more education out there to the community. I became a board member with CARE because initially um, I had been taken by one of my colleagues to just attend a meeting, but as I got to know the people who were involved in care and saw the great work that they were doing, I knew that it was something that was making a real difference in the West Side. Um, and eventually as I saw the different kinds of resources that they were bringing and the ability for me to do my job better with the resources that they were providing, I knew that it was something that could help move the needle in the West Valley to, to bring to bring things that hadn't been there before, to help our community in a way that wasn't being answered by the greater city at large, and to draw attention that our kids needed services and our kids needed help too. The reason that I chose to be a board member is CARE is a grassroots, hands-on, in the community organization that is really out there making a difference, um, making an impact on changing the trajectory of um, the thinking for youth in the West Valley. And I am so for that um, as a community person. I love what they do and that's why I decided to be a board member with CARE Coalition. It was really important to me because at the time my job was in a high school and I was constantly coming into contact with students who had need and who were having thoughts of suicide and didn't have access to the basic needs to even begin to address their mental health concerns. And I realized that if we didn't take action together and raise our voices and bring awareness to the needs of the kids in our community, that we were just waiting around for someone else to do it and that we had to be part of the change that we wanted to see. I believe that it truly takes a village to raise a child. So collaborating with other organizations that have a common goal, it's very important that we all come together and work together 
with it to get towards that common goal. Uh, with the CARE Coalition, that common goal is serving youth as much as we possibly can to provide them the social emotional learning that they require, um, the behavioral health, uh, you know, just all kinds of opportunities and help them understand their choices and that they are brilliant beings and they're our future leaders and it's important that we all get together and really rally behind them and support them so that they are able to, you know, be those uh, leaders that we need in the future. The most meaningful to me is to see how the coalition has grown and developed. The program started very focused on education regarding teen pregnancy prevention and sexual health. This has not changed as our focus, but it has also evolved to look at co-occurring disorders um, or health concerns such as health inequities, discrimination, affirmative consent and discrimination, substance abuse, mental health concerns, uh, teen dating violence, and other impactful issues. Um, and so we're really looking at a systemic lens um, and looking at the root causes to develop approaches that will not only educate um, and raise awareness, but you know, we're looking at training adults in their own lives, um, providing parents with skills and resources and looking at environmental change. Touchstone worked with the community to implement evidence-based curricula, making proud choices and draw the line that teach youth about sexual health, consent, healthy relationships, and resisting pressure. These programs were taught to youth in school, in touchstone clinics, community sites, and even virtually. These programs contain important information to help youth make informed decisions about their future and are sustained through community members and teachers continuing to implement by embedding the curricula into their programming. The most meaningful thing for me has been just working with the youth in general. Um, there's never a day where it's always the same, it, there's always something different. Um, the youth, you know, a lot of these youth, they don't have a trusted adult to go to, so to be that trusted adult uh, means everything to me. Um, uh, just because I know that they're so sincere and they look for you for help and to be that help is, is just everything for me. One thing that was really memorable for me was when I went to a future freshman night and one of the eighth graders that I had um, taught was actually there as well and she came up to me and she recognized me and she said hi and how much she loved the class and that was a really good memory for me just knowing that that what I was teaching and what we're putting out there is making an impact on these kids they remember us and they have very positive things to say about all the classes that we teach and yeah that was just very impactful for me and it shows that what we're doing all of us are doing here really does have a lasting effect on the community. I've been able to work with teachers one-on-one -on -one and able to give them the information that they need when they may not know the answer themselves. Uh, within observing the classes, I'm able to give them uh, coaching tips afterwards and they're able to feel more confident in implementing and delivering um, evidence-based curriculum to the youth. Um, and in training teachers, it's actually been really cool because a lot of the teachers, after you're done with the training, they want to explain that they learned a lot and they didn't know these things before and how they're going to help them in their classroom. And then two, it also helps them uh, be better confident and equipped with learning and teaching youth in a trauma-informed environment. So in my role, um, I don't really get too much direct interaction with the teachers um, training-wise, um, but it is good to see, you know, at administrative level when we're working with the schools, working with administration, uh, to really see the change that the teachers have uh, done these past couple of years. I know um, first coming in, you know, there's still this stigma around teen pregnancy and teaching teen pregnancy. Um, and it's really been, you know, a challenge at some times, um, at some points, uh, trying to just talk to them, to get them to listen, um, and just being open to um, the, the curriculum and just what we're trying to teach the kids. Um, one of the biggest things I think I've noticed is, you know, first coming in, there's always that hesitation and always that fear from teachers of, oh, I can't teach this, or someone else should teach this, a health teacher should teach this, and them really not understanding that, you know, they see their kids every single day for probably more than their parents sometimes. And with that, they have this connection that not everyone has with these kids. And, 
you know, it's been good to see them go through the training, see them with that hesitation and with that fear, and really as they facilitate um, with our trainers and with our um, health educators, as well as, you know, being able to facilitate by themselves, um, really starting to come in with their own on it and really owning it. And, you know, one of the biggest ones, we have a PE teacher at Union Elementary School we work with. Um, her name is Audrey. And, you know, at first she was really nervous. She was someone that wasn't sure if she can do this. And, you know, three years in, she's really taken it and making it her own. She's really became an advocate for the program and realized how impactful it is for the kids that she works with. And uh, it's been really great to see her growth and her change. And it's good to now have another advocate that started off a little timid um, and now being someone who just loves talking about it and is very comfortable with it and knows that it's something that's needed um, in the schools and in the community. Hi, I'm Audrey Hill. I teach PE at Hurley Ranch. I've been working with Touchstone with the Draw the Line Respect the Line program for the last four or five years, but have been teaching on my own for the last three. And I am grateful for the program and everything that Touchstone has helped us do. I feel like the program when we started four or five years ago has completely shifted and has become like our baby, or at least my baby now. And I'm really adamant and very supportive of the whole movement. And I think it's like very useful information that we're getting out to kids. And I see them using it on a daily basis, whether it's with peer pressure, sticking up for themselves with different issues that come along. But I feel like it's it's been like a really big help to our girls especially and it like I said 10 years ago this wasn't my passion but now it is because I've had former students come back and have had kids and I feel like this is my this is my mission now to help keep them from making choices that may affect their life or a lot earlier than what they expect or just just to help them give them other options and choices that they need to do but I just, I mean, I value everything about this program. I think it's amazing. The curriculum is really good to work with and use. The kids like it, they understand it, they relate. And just like the difference we've seen in from the pre-survey to the after program survey, that my kids grow so much, it's, it's really good. So that means the information is sticking with them, which is very important. I'm just, I'm grateful that I even was involved in this and that Touchstone was able to help us into provide us this curriculum to help get this information out to kids in an uh, effective manner, like one that doesn't really push limits, but it pushes enough to help them. And I think the community has really been supportive too. Like we've had a lot of, not really a lot of backlash from parents about it. They've been really supportive. Some have even came and asked me questions, wanted to look at the curriculum, and they were like, oh, this is wonderful. Like I wish I would have had it when I was in high school. So, I mean, I think it's amazing and it's been really helpful to our kids at Hurley Ranch and I'm grateful to Touchstone for everything that they have done to help us. Evidence-based parenting curriculums such as active parenting of teens and positive parenting programs were delivered in school districts and community sites throughout the West Valley. During this time, parent educators and school counselors were trained in APT to sustain implementation. The most memorable session I gave for sure was one where there was around 22 participants and every single one like went through all the sessions and completed the entire program. That was um, very memorable and that was something that made me very proud because it just showed that you know, I was able to pique their interest enough for them to want to continue and just seeing how motivated they were to learn and to better themselves. Um, really stuck out to me from that group. One of the things that I remember is talking to a parent um, recently and she was going through a crisis where she didn't know what to do anymore with her, with her teens, with her children. She was losing the patience. Um, you know, we're in this pandemic currently, you know, COVID-19 pandemic where parents are losing their patience. Uh, kids are losing their patience. They don't know what to do no more. And, you know, just being creative is hard, you know, when you have to do something new every day. And so just being able to have a conversation with the parent and she's losing her patience, you know, she was able to learn some strategies on how to be more creative in her house using things that she has in her home, 
reaching out to community members, reaching out to family members, and that she's not in it alone. She's with other parents, she's with other community members, other families that are dealing with the same thing, you know, losing their patience, um, wanting to pull their hair out because they don't know what to do anymore, they don't know how to be creative, but, you know, at the end of the day, there are people out there who care, so, you know, just taking that time to having conversations with her, she actually was open to um, reaching out to other people, she felt more comfortable, um, just trying to get her kids to not be so panicky, uh, not so stressful during this pandemic. And it made me feel good because she actually did say, you know, that if she wouldn't have had that time to have that conversation, she, she wouldn't know what she would have done. The experiences that I've had with facilitating uh, with a parent liaison has been uh, great. I've been able to see how much material they've uh, learned and adapted and how they connect it to their parents because they have a better rapport with them and they know them, their personal stories, their kids. And so when we were able to teach them the curriculum and they were able to reteach it to the parents, it really made me feel like I was making a difference because now that leads with sustainability and how our program is gonna continue on even if we're not there to teach it ourselves. My job is to give out resources to parents, um, English classes, citizenship classes, any parenting classes, anything that can help out parents. And this year we got uh, Karina for the Positive Parenting Program. It's the first year we have this program. We've had Karina before, but this is the first time uh, she comes with the Positive Parenting Program. Um, and it was an awesome program. We had a lot of parents come in and a lot of parents actually got educated on new things that they had no idea. They had a bad relationship with their children. Um, what Karina taught has helped them. Um, this is an awesome uh, program because it helps you how to communicate with your children, how to work with them, how to make, have family time together. Personally, I couldn't use that with my children because they're grown, um, but I did with my granddaughter. Okay, I became more active with my granddaughter. I did more stuff. I learned a lot of things here that I could teach my daughter-in-law that really did help her. The Youth Leadership Council's purpose is to empower the youth in the West Valley to become leaders in their community. The youth are equipped with leadership skills that include interpersonal effectiveness, social change, and community service. The YLC participate in trainings, work on public service announcements, and community awareness campaigns. Really, Crystal? It's not that bad. Baby, she just doesn't want you to have fun. It's not that. I took a workshop and I learned about the dangers of misusing and sharing prescription drugs. I even learned that in some cases, people died. This announcement was brought to you by Care Coalition and Touchstone Health Services and was made possible by Arizona Parent Commission of Drug Education and Prevention, Governor's Office of Youth, Faith, and Family. I attended the NPC class and I thought it was really cool because we learned about STDs and how to prevent them and I thought it was really helpful for our youth because a lot of them go through like that and I thought it was really cool to learn how to prevent them and to help my youth in preventing them as well. They gave us awareness about drugs and how it could affect families and the guy that was talking to us was like really cool about it. Uh, the reason I started YLC was because I noticed a lot of issues in my community and I wanted to help my youth and inspire others to make those changes with me. Uh, how uh, drugs really affect people. Uh, how many people like as soon as they get addicted on drugs uh, they like fall down like a rabbit hole and they just can't get out and for some it's just hard to get out. It's hard for search for help so yeah it's, it's also it's also helpful to spread awareness about how drugs can really be harmful and how it can really um, how, well, yeah, how can be harmful. Yeah. I joined YLC because I really thought it was a great opportunity to help my community because I see people struggling and I see people just um, in pain and I just really want to help. 
The way this has changed me is I have actually gained a lot of leadership skills and I've gained like awareness about how certain things that you do kind of affect others and around the community and yourself. And I found this experience very helpful. Touchstone Health Services and Care Coalition held the Adolescent Conference Beyond This Moment, Building Community Resiliency, aiming to engage in content around adolescent well-being and community resilience. The conference incorporated a youth panel consisting of members from the Youth Leadership Council. Attendees were encouraged to participate in a conversation around fighting, bullying, violence, mental health, and relationships. So the most memorable moment that I have had during this program has been the adolescent conference that we um, had last December, beyond this moment building community resiliency. And one of the moments that um, is ingrained in my memory is definitely the um, youth panel, right, where the uh, leaders from the YLC were able to express to the attendees um, the issues that they are struggling with as teenagers in this day and age. And it was a great opportunity for the other attendees to listen to their concerns and then hopefully apply um, what they learned during the conference in their continued support towards the, the schools that they, that they teach at or the programs that they are running. What has been the most memorable moment for me during the program has to be the summit. We, I am in charge of the Youth Leadership Council and had an opportunity to have a space set up for our Youth Leadership Council to have a platform to share their worries, their issues, and even answer questions that professionals had in the audience. And it was a very beautiful moment because it ended up leading into a youth-led conversation. And so instead of professionals asking questions to the youth, it was youth asking questions to youth and them having a conversation within each other. Uh, and that was really beautiful to see because everybody else uh, as a professional stood back and just witnessed the moment of youth having that conversation amongst themselves. In addition, I think seeing the youth really take charge with, with this grant, with this coalition, um, has been so rewarding. Um, at the summit, they, they shined. They were able to lead a discussion on change they wanted to see in their communities and their schools. They develop wonderful public service announcements that get played on the radio to help educate their peers. Um, and there are just so many young people who are activists and want to see positive change. They want to do better, they want our community to be better, and it is so encouraging to see that, and oftentimes that's not focused on enough. By being involved in the CARE Coalition and with Touchstone Health Services, uh, it's, again, it's what I, you know, you throw a pebble out into a pond and it just creates those ripples. When we build healthy individuals, those he healthy individuals um, share what they've learned with their families or brothers or sisters or parents or extended family when they have children, they also are able to, you know, break those cycles of uh, generational whatever it is, generational poverty, generational abuse, any of those things, um, our students, when they participate in these programs, are able to break those cycles and then they can go on and create positive communities um, for all of, all of the people that are, are involved and those that aren't involved because um, it just creates that, that ripple effect for our community and it's not often that um, we can say that we're a part of this and uh, through the work that we do at Touchstone Health Services, we can definitely say that. And I first became familiar with Care Coalition about five years ago when it was beginning. I firmly believe that because of the Care Coalition and uh, Touchstone's leadership that we now have school-based counseling services in our high schools, uh, and that that was something from five years ago I talked with leadership about from Touchstone and finally just this year we now have it at Millennium and it's continuing to all of our schools. The programs are very important because 
um, they help our students, whether it's teen pregnancy prevention program or whether it's something tied to suicide prevention or uh, mental health, um, dating relationships. It's a whole gamut of services and programs that um, we've worked with um, through my affiliations with the two districts with Touchstone. Um, and it just helps our students because um, we need those caring individuals that can work with our students and then the students can take what they've learned and actually apply them um, in their everyday lives so that um, it helps our community. And when we help our community, it just grows and grows and grows and creates that ripple effect that can be seen um, throughout you know, our state, our nation, our world. I see um, Touchstone, having made such a huge commitment to our community in general, and I know that's because of not only Touchstone but the whole CARE Coalition, that we have emergencies in the community and we see people from the coalition present at the emergencies. We see people from the coalition offering mental health support uh, when there are uh, unexpected tragedies. And our community has been brought together in the West Valley with resources because of this coalition. And the focus on youth serving youth is, is paramount. Youth are our future, they are our today, they are our tomorrow, and it is important that we give them the, the skills and the resources to be successful in life today and tomorrow. So this is why the CARE Coalition is so important. I believe CARE Coalition is very, very important in that it brings so many organizations together and they get to network and work with each other and devise new and innovative plans within each other. I mean, that's, it's completely a win-win for the community, for the youth, as well as everybody working within the CARE Coalition. One of the things that COVID, uh, the transition that we had to do with, um, with doing things in person versus doing things virtual has been definitely that we have been able to reach out to different um, types of people, different youths that maybe had not known about our program before, but through social media, through um, our virtual workshops, we have been able to also support them and give them the information, give them the resources, give them the resiliency skills that is very important during these trying times. I hope that our sustainability is strong and that our curriculums are being able to be taught by other professionals. I hope that our Youth Leadership Council uh, members are able to be successful in their lives with all the tools that we've given them. Most of them are heading off to college, so I hope to see them be leaders in whatever program or major or other activity they decide to lead with, and they t really take on all the tools that they learned through the Youth Leadership. I also hope that uh, the community really takes on all the resources we've given out to them through our CARE Coalition. We've really put out a lot of work to them and I really hope that they feel like they have the tools to, even if they don't have the resource at hand, they know who to go to to receive those resources. Um, if the program were to end, I would say that I hope CARE can continue. I hope. Um, the people, the board members still have that passion that they do now and keep bringing the resources to the community and the teachers and the, um, the youth and the parents, everyone out there, I hope they can still continue to receive resources and come together at least, you know, once a quarter and get together and just share everything that they have going on. I hope that the people who learned or taught pay it forward 
Um, because we talk about it now, it doesn't mean it stops. And that's when it comes to anything about healthy relationships, um, suicide prevention, um, risk factors when it comes to youth and their behaviors, and definitely the trauma-informed environment because I feel the more that we give the youth, they're able to pay it forward by giving that to somebody else and then carrying on and causing, making that foundation where youth are able to feel comfortable and in a safe environment. Um, I also hope that they're able to take the information they retained and give that also because with that we continue kind of like a spider web. It goes here and there and it continues and it becomes a bigger broad picture. Um, and the purpose is to make healthy youth and with that um, they can create a foundation for the ones coming up behind them. Sometimes in the world of prevention and in the world of mental health, you're the only one on your campus or in your agency who gets it, who understands, who knows that there's more that can be done with a little bit of prevention than a lot of, than a lot of reactivity. And this is just a place where we can come and exchange ideas and problem solve. And, and it feels like a family to me at this point. And I just love my involvement here. And if you're thinking about getting involved, but you're not sure, you should just come try one of our meetings. You can come, have some free food, meet some cool people, um, and you can learn maybe just, maybe just one thing that'll move the needle at your school. Touchstone is happy to announce that we received word that we got a three-year uh, teen pregnancy prevention grant um, from the Office of Population Affairs. The exciting thing about this is it extends the, the quality work that we've been doing out here in the Far West Valley to a whole new community. So we'll be working with the Alhambra Village area, Maryville, um, Glendale, that area of the I-17 corridor to bring uh, systemic change addressing teen pregnancy through a trauma-informed lens, being able to provide parenting classes, trainings to staff, um, youth leadership components, um, and direct curriculum, evidence-based curriculum to youth that really targets um, not just sexual health, but really looking at emotional regulation and mindfulness and all these wonderful things that if wasn't for this past grant that we wouldn't have been able to develop. And so we are so thrilled and excited that CARE can continue to expand um, into a new region and um, branch out. And so we're just really hopeful for the future.